tactical military shooters. What does that make you think of? Some of you will probably say Red Orchestra. Some will say Arma. And some will say the Insurgency series. However, the first thing that pops into my head is Brothers in Arms. Brothers in Arms is my childhood game. When everyone else was out playing Call of Duty 2, playing some fucking Halo 2, I was sitting there in my basement in a little tiny yellow polygon looking ass room playing Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30. I love this game so goddamn much that I still have the original poster for the game that I bought back in 2005. The original poster. Sure, it's a little dinged up, all right? It's got a little bit of, got some scratch marks on it and whatnot, but it survived like 28 moves across provinces, full provinces across the country. This poster has lived on with me. I love this poster, man. And I'm gonna put it up right up on this goddamn wall. Anyways, guys, I am so, excited to talk about Brothers in Arms. Like, I can't even tell you how much of an impact this one goddamn game had on myself and my little brother back in the day. This game formed relationships for my little brother and I. It bonded us together and it bonded so many of my early childhood friendships together and by so many of them i mean one <laughs> because i had one friend also nobody has talked about this game on youtube besides the gamers youtube channel which didn't really talk about the actual game and the feelings of the game it more of talked about the development of it and the subsequent fall from grace that it had this video is going to focus more on myself and the personal impact that this game had on me. Back when I was growing up, my parents were a little bit strict on which games my little brother and I could play. For instance, we only had two goddamn M-rated games. One of them was Halo 1, and the other one was Halo 2, <laughs> and that was it. However, on one fine 2005 afternoon, I convinced my mom to let me get one other M-rated game. I have no idea how I swung that. I have no clue, because God damn it, I wish I had that kind of argumentative power right now in my life, but I have obviously have lost that trait. So we head over to GameStop, which by the way, guys, isn't just a goddamn walk down the street. We're not walking three blocks to go to a fucking GameStop. We're not driving a like 15, 10 minutes down the goddamn street over to a GameStop to pick up fucking video game, all right? We make the trek, all right? We saddle up our horses, all right? We got our carriage in the back and we start the long 40 minute trek to Brandon, Manitoba from our shit farming town to pick up the best goddamn game that I have ever owned. So we pulled up to the GameStop and I had one game in mind. I had one game that I really, really, 
wanted. Call of Duty 2. However, my mom didn't want my little brother and I to play Call of Duty. So instead, I found the game that impacted myself and my little brother the most. We found Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30. And by God, this game still has such a huge impact on me. I fucking love this game. We get back to our small as fuck farming town in the middle of dead ass nowhere, Manitoba. So I sprint out of the goddamn car, sprint downstairs into my weird ass polygon looking yellow ass fucking gaming room, I throw the goddamn disc into the goddamn Xbox looking like a Frisbee and experienced the most incredible song I've experienced in my whole goddamn life. Even to this day, this fucking song holds up so well. Like I could just sit here and listen to the fucking song over and over on repeat. I've never heard a song as impactful as the main menu song for Brothers in Arms. The pure emotion of this song is unmatched. You're greeted with these reassuring horns that instill like a sense of purpose and duty. And after each measure, a new element is added in. The horns get a little bit louder and starts building upon the purpose and duty that you already are feeling just hearing the song. And you start thinking to yourself, this can't possibly get more dynamic. And then it does. God damn it. This song fits so well with every aspect of this game. Somehow, every feeling that you will have playing this game, you will experience listening to this song. I have no clue how they did it, but it's incredible. It's emotional. When I hear this song, I, I don't even know what to do. I just have to sit there and listen and experience the whole thing. Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30 came out in early 2005 during the rise of the Hollywood shooter genre. Games like Call of Duty and Medal of Honor. However, Gearbox Studios, and yes, that Gearbox, decided that they would rather create a tactical military shooter game getting down to the nitty gritty aspects of World War II. Obi! It's just a shitty deal. In war, everybody gets a shitty deal. Makes sense. Doesn't make any goddamn sense. Come on, Renus. Look at me, buddy. Look at me. The troubles in far off. We gotta move. He's not even dead yet. Hang on. Obi, get out of it. Let's move. What are you doing? Too many of them. God. 
I think my favorite part about this game and why it stuck with me so much is how it approaches insurmountable odds for your squad. Sure, Brothers in Arms has some pretty fucking crazy scenarios for you and your squad, but the way that you tackle these challenges is so much different than Call of Duty or Medal of Honor. So you have to command your fire team to suppress the enemy while you flank the enemy with your assault team to close the distance so that you can kill them from the side. Or commanding your entire team to hide behind a tank that's advancing and punching right through the center of the enemies. So at least you have a piece of cover while you're pushing up as well. Just to show the massive differences between these two series, let's compare the Battle of Carentan between Call of Duty World War II, a game which launched last year, and Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30, which launched early 2005. The squad mates that you've learned to care about are being killed down below while you're at the top of this church. You have to order your teammates down below to different cover to protect themselves from the oncoming enemy while you're up top trying to snipe the enemies. It's extremely similar to the fight in Call of Duty World War II. But look at these incredible, incredible tone differences between these two series. In Call of Duty World War II, you are literally covering one man hiding behind a sandbag while five half tracks full of guys jump on the goddamn dude. All right? It's so unbelievably insane that it just takes me right out of the experience. And to make matters worse, the church starts exploding like some goddamn Michael Bay fucking fever dream. I got you, hold on! No! And my character is still alive after that. Excuse me, guys, but uh, one, we just had a fucking church explode around us and collapse, okay? And number two, motherfucker, I was just hit by a cast iron goddamn church bell. How the fuck am I still alive, okay? I did not know that this squad was a part of the Captain America program. This horse shit ass game doesn't make me feel a god damn thing for these plot armor ass looking fucking characters. I'm so glad that Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30 puts you into situations where you learn to care about your squad mates. There aren't many cutscenes within Road to Hill 30 and you're not explicitly told to care about these characters. And yet, I still remember every major character's name to this goddamn day. For instance, you have Matt Baker, your player, a squad leader who was promoted to sergeant without actually wanting it. You have Red, or Heartstock, the leader of the uh, fire team. You have fucking Allen and Garnett. You have fucking 
Mac, you got DeSola, you got Corian, and you have my favorite character of them all. You have Leggett. Leggett isn't really a good character in blanket terms. He's always pulled away from combat with Mac. You rarely, rarely fight with this guy. And the first memorable thing that actually happens with him is when he is found alive alongside Alan and Garnett's dead bodies after a loud gunfight with a couple of Nazis. The entire squad starts to hate him, saying that it's his fault that those squad members are dead and that he probably didn't do anything to help. The reason that I identify so heavily with Leggett is a pretty long story about my upbringing and the things that happened to me as a kid. Just like every other YouTube creator who is making content on this goddamn website, we were bullied pretty goddamn heavily through school. I know, pretty hard to imagine the sexiest human on the internet, me, being bullied through my entire goddamn life, but it's true. The town I grew up in was absolutely fucking terrible to me back in the day. Like, I used to get my ass kicked every fucking day from like 2002 to like 2006. I'm not even that goddamn old, okay? Like that wasn't when I was in high school, okay? That was when I was seven years old to like 12 years old. Whenever I needed a bit of a break, I would just fake sick and go over to my grandparents' house while my mom was out working one of her two jobs at the time. My grandpa and I used to watch the military channel all day, every goddamn day, and I loved that shit. Basically, my whole childhood, I grew up learning about World War II, I learned about Iraq, I learned about the fights in Afghanistan, like, I learned about the brothership that was formed between these people in combat. My cousin, my little brother, and I would play army in my grandparents' backyard almost every single goddamn day. Or we would play in this field that was a couple blocks down the street. And that's like, that's like literally the only positive memory that I have in that goddamn town. Throughout my entire life, I've always wanted to be a soldier. Even to this day, even to this day, I still have intentions on joining the Canadian Armed Forces. To end this bit of a tangent, I would always, always put myself in the shoes of Leggett. Always being bullied by his squad mates. Being fucking doubted all the time. Shit, the dude was probably a goddamn 4F. He probably had to keep trying and trying to join the goddamn military just like the real Medal of Honor recipient, Vito Bertolda. And if you haven't heard anything about this man's story, look it up and research it because it is the most incredible things to ever be recorded and documented throughout history. There will be a link in the description to some sources for the story, but it is absolutely amazing and it's so incredible like I, I I don't even know how to properly describe this man it's insane I know it's not everyone's cup of tea but I would always always put myself in the shoes of Leggett as he's sacrificing himself for his goddamn squad mates, his brothers in arms. And I always felt like that's the most honorable way to go out in this world, is protecting your brothers. 
that got uh, a lot more real than I was expecting or really wanting. And I know that uh, Brothers in Arms doesn't have the best moment to moment gameplay. It's not the best game in the world. It doesn't have the best story in the world. But I felt like I needed to tell something about my backstory with this game and why this specific game means so much to me. I know that it's super fucking corny, but back in the day, back in 2005, when I was getting my ass kicked on the daily, when I had zero friends, these squad mates were my friends, you know? I wasn't playing as Sergeant Baker. I was Sergeant Baker, you know? I was the squad leader that was unprepared for a promotion. That was me. And I could not imagine a better game to be talking about on my birthday than Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30. So if you have time to give this game a shot, it's available on Steam and it's great. It looks fantastic. It looks so much better than the original Xbox version. And that's where all this footage is being from. It's from the PC version. So I just saw it on there and I was like, I gotta replay this game to relive my child. And it brought up so much repressed shit that I, I, I appreciate this game so much more now than I did back then. And I'm just I'm glad that I saw that this game was available through Steam. And I'm glad that I played through it again. And I could not imagine a better game to be talking about on my 23rd birthday than Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know that it got pretty pretty deep and pretty serious and not really about the game and more about the experience that I had with the game and back in 2005 and my childhood and being fucking bullied all the time and just hated for everything that I did and all that shit. But I, fe I felt like it needed to be said and I felt like on my birthday would be a good time to talk about something that meant so much to me and I'm just glad that you guys stayed through and watched the video and if you did consider dropping a like and a subscribe on the channel we're trying to hit 400 subscribers by the end of the year and also if, if I mean fuck if you made it this goddamn far you listen to my whole goddamn childhood all right you got some dirt on me baby the least you can do is drop a subscription for me <laughs> anyways guys um I'm gonna do some more like um actual videos on Brothers in Arms, what is it, Earned in Blood, the second game on the Xbox, since I never actually played that game back when I was a kid. I only played it with um, one of my one of my friends um, and only multiplayer like once. So I'm going to do an actual video on that and I'm going to do an actual video on Brothers in Arms, Hell's Highway for the Xbox 360. Um, I haven't played any of those. So we're going to do a straight up, is, uh, is this a good game and should they continue with the series? So there we go. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the Indie Critic channel. I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. It's still my fucking birthday. <laughs> Give me money.